In today's video, we're going to be walking through a care and breeding guide on the electric blue acara. This is one of my all-time favorite fish. I have six of these currently, including a ton of babies, and I'm really excited to talk about these fish today, so let's dive right in. So I actually did a bit of a care guide on the electric blue acara about three years ago, and that information still holds true, but I have a lot to expand upon, especially when it comes to breeding, and I can't wait to talk about that today. So the first thing that stands out with the electric blue acara is just that awesome blue color. You really can't find that electric blue when it comes to South American cichlids. The electric blue acara is actually derived from the regular blue acara, which is a South American cichlid and a very cool fish, but it doesn't have that electric blue color. The electric blue acara is a pretty hardy fish, especially when it comes to the other electric blue variants that might be out there for other species, and I've really enjoyed keeping this fish for a lot of different reasons. The first being obviously that awesome color that you get and it stands out in any cichlid community tank. It also has great temperament and works with a lot of different types of fish. It holds its own against some bigger fish and also isn't too aggressive when it comes to smaller tank mates. The electric blue acara provides a lot of activity in your tank as well. They're very active swimmers swimming back and forth in your tank. So with this fish, you not only get that pop of blue, but also that great activity in your aquarium. Being South American cichlids, they usually prefer softer water with lower pH and temperatures in that tropical range of probably 75 to 82 degrees. Anywhere within that range should probably work well. I always suggest not chasing the pH and hardness levels as most of these fish are adaptable and tank bred, so they'll do just fine in your normal water conditions. I have harder water and higher pH, which isn't great for some South American cichlids, but the electric blue acara have thrived and bred often in my tanks. As mentioned, they are hardy fish, so if you keep your parameters consistent, you should have no problem keeping the electric blue acara. Just keep up with your water changes and make sure your nitrates don't get too high and obviously that you don't have any ammonia or nitrate. When it comes to food, they pretty much eat anything that you give them. I usually mix in some quality flakes and pellets and then mixing in some frozen foods every couple weeks, usually blood worms or brine shrimp, makes for a really good treat and a really varied diet that definitely makes them grow quickly. In terms of growth rate, sometimes it can be fairly modest since their overall max size is only about six to seven inches in total length. I have seen an electric bull acara get up to seven, maybe seven and a half inches, but usually it'll take a few years for them to get to that size. I actually did a full growth rate video that I'll leave in the upper right corner on my electric blue acara that I've had for about four years now, and it's about five and a half to six inches in total length. And knowing that they reach that six to seven inch mark and that they have the behavior of just being active swimmers, you do want to provide a sizable tank for these guys. I would say a minimum tank size for an adult is about 40 gallons, but if you're going to keep them with other tank mates, I would strongly suggest a 55 or 75 gallon tank as that would provide a great home for your electric blue car. And when you're setting that tank up, I would recommend sand, driftwood, and rocks just to mimic their natural environment. And they can definitely work well with live plants. The only time I have seen my electric blue cars eat or destroy any plants is when they're in breeding mode and the plants are just in their vicinity. But if you go with some of your hardier plants like Anubias and Java Fern, I think it makes for a really good tank setup, especially when you have that pop of electric blue up against the green of some of your plants. So if you go with sand, driftwood, rocks, and plants, I think it's an ideal setup for your electric blue acara. So now that you have your tank set up, let's talk about the different tank mate options you have for the electric blue acara. As mentioned, they aren't super aggressive, so they can go with a lot of different types of fish. Some of your smaller fish can coexist in a community setup, or they can hold their own against some bigger fish, bigger cichlids, and be just fine. I did a full top 10 list that I'll also leave in the upper right hand corner, but just to quickly summarize some of my favorite options for them, the Severum is a perfect choice. It's another South American cichlid that has a great temperament and works well with the electric blue acara. And then also most of your geophagus species can work very well. That's one of my favorite trios is keeping the electric blue acara with severums and geophagus and just having a great South American cichlid tank set up that doesn't have to be too big. The electric blue acara can also fit with some of your more peaceful cichlids like your angelfish, your keyholes, your pistogramma, your rams, things like that. They would usually work really well with them and they can go with some of your mid-sized tetras and barbs, something like the Colombian tetra, the Congo tetra. 
I have a school of Denison barbs that I really like with my electric blue Acara. They definitely could work with silver dollars, ball of sharks, tinfoil barbs, but some of those do require a pretty big tank, so just keep that in mind. And then some of your bigger cichlids, they actually can hold their own. I've kept mine with some bigger cichlids like the Oscar and the Chocolate Cichlid for over two years now and they've worked really well together. I would take caution with some of your more aggressive cichlids like your Jack Dempsey, your Convict, your Firemouth. Most of those are regularly kept with the Electric Blue Acara in most cases it will be fine. Just know that when keeping some of your larger or aggressive cichlids together, that the larger tank will definitely lead to better chances of success when keeping them as tank mates. And then lastly, they can definitely work with a lot of your bottom dwellers, things like clown loaches, plecos, corridoras even. They can really fit with a lot of different options, which like I said, makes them an awesome choice for most Aquarists. So one area I wanted to expand within is breeding when it comes to the electric blue Acara. So if you're trying to breed the electric blue Acara, my advice would be to get a small group and just have them naturally pair up. Sometimes it can be difficult to tell the difference between a male and female. Usually the males will be slightly larger and their dorsal fin will be more elongated and pointed. However, I have seen some female electric blue Acara still kind of get that long pointed dorsal fin. So it can be a challenge to tell the difference, especially when they're younger. So if you have that small group and the pair forms, they'll likely start breeding your tank and doing it fairly often. Yeah, baby! <laughs> In my 150 gallon tank, which I've only had set up for about five or six months now, the electric blue Acara has formed a pair right away, and I've bred in this tank probably eight times already. The female will usually lay their eggs on rocks, especially more flat rocks and surfaces. Sometimes they might lay their eggs on driftwood pieces as well, but once those eggs are laid and the male will fertilize them, the parents will guard the eggs and the fry very aggressively. They are awesome parents and I've even had one chase around my algae scraper when the eggs were about two feet away. It's really cool to see this behavior and just see how great of parents they are. After they lay the eggs and they're fertilized, the eggs will hatch after about two to three days and you'll start to see little wigglers and eventually it will become a cloud of fry. The parents might move the eggs or the fry into more secure areas in the tank. Sometimes they'll move them to areas where they maybe dug out a pit. And this can be challenging if you have a lot of rooted plants as they'll basically tear everything apart in that general vicinity. But around day five or six, that's usually when you'll see the cloud of fry swimming around the parents. As mentioned, both the male and female will guard them as best they can, but if you do have tank mates like other cichlids or other tetras, the fry likely won't last very long in the tank. So if you're trying to raise the fry, the best option is to take out the pair and put them in their own tank, or to scoop out the fry and put them in their own grow out tank. That's what I did with mine. I just netted out all the babies and put them into a 10 gallon grow out tank. You could use a net or a turkey baster or a siphon to get some of those babies out. The parents will likely go berserk. I had them swimming into the net trying to save all their babies, not knowing that they were going into a safer grow out tank. So here's the grow out tank with the babies about a week old. To feed them, I just crushed up flakes as finely as I could and they readily accepted anything I put in the tank. And here they are today, about 45 days old. You can already see some of them starting to get that electric blue color in their body, and they've already grown really well. At this point, I likely need to upgrade my grow out tank size just to accommodate these guys. But one thing to keep in mind is if you do have that pair, they're going to keep on breeding in your tank and that could cause issues with aggression, especially if your tank isn't big. So you may just need to remove them or separate them if you don't wanna continuously see breeding behavior and aggression in your tank. But overall, they're great parents and it's just a really rewarding process to watch. I'll probably keep breeding them for a while and then separate the pair. So I hope you found that information helpful. And like I mentioned earlier, if you wanna see the top 10 tank mates for the electric blue Acara, click this video here. Or if you'd like to see the growth rate and evolution of my biggest electric blue Acara, click this video here. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next one.